The Gospel comes to us from St. Matthew, chapter 18. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. And since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I have with you? In his anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each one of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you all. In the name of God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. If you join me in prayer. Uh, Lord, today as we open up forgiveness again, uh, as we open up what it means to be forgiven people, uh, people who are forgiven by you, people who uh, you look at and say, as I have forgiven them, they forgive. Uh, Lord, may you be with us and bless us that in this word uh, we may see who we are and how we can be. We ask this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. So we are looking at forgiveness. Uh, last week we looked at revenge. Uh, it's going to be a precursor to forgiveness. This week we're looking at forgiveness uh, in another kind of interesting circumstance. Uh, forgiveness, just a little background on forgiveness. Forgiveness is not condoning. Forgiveness does not mean that you condone what happened. Something happens. Uh, if you forgive somebody, lots of people don't forgive because they think that by forgiving, they say it's okay. They say, whatever happened to me, whatever you did to me, it's okay. Forgiveness is not condoning. Forgiveness is not saying it's okay. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Uh, there are times and places for forgetting. Sometimes within forgiveness, there is forgetting. Uh, but oftentimes with forgiveness, forgiveness is better remembering. Remembering. This person did this. This person did this. There's, there's now a change. There's a shift. There's boundaries that have to happen. Uh, there, there's a different set of relationship stuff that, that needs to happen with this forgiveness. Sometimes forgiveness is remember. Remember. Forgiveness is also not reconciling. Reconciling takes two people. Reconciling is a longer process. Restoration uh, of a relationship takes time. It takes time. It doesn't just like step. Forgiveness. forgiveness takes time. Uh, reconciliation takes even more time. Uh, but it's a good process. We'll talk about that in the fall, actually. Uh, forgiveness is not justice and consequences. Sometimes people uh, feel like they, they, uh, they need to not face consequences if they're forgiven. And so uh, people look and they, they go to court, like say somebody breaks into your house, they go to court and they, they beg for forgiveness. Uh, what they're essentially they're doing is they're saying, you know, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> Um, but no, you did this, this happened. Um, now there are consequences to what also happened. Forgiveness is not justice and consequences. Forgiveness is always personal. It is something that happens between you and me. It is something that happens between you and your 
your spouse, it's something that happens between you and your kids, it's something that happens on a personal level. Forgiveness is a process. It takes time. It takes time to forgive people. It takes time somebody did something. It takes time. So, what forgiveness is essentially dealing with is the internal state of your own heart. Your own heart, your own peace, your own shalom, your own wholeness. Uh, who you are, who you are going to be in this world. Am I going to be a person who does not have shalom? Am I going to be a person who is owned by something somebody else did? Am I going to be a person who is owned by the sin of others? Or am I going to be somebody who says, look, within my own heart, I forgive. I have shalom, I have peace, I have wholeness. So we are looking today at Matthew 18. Matthew 18 is known famously for lots of different things. It's a very popular chapter of the Bible. Um, this, this particular section of Matthew 18 uh, has lots to do with grace, with God's grace. And this is an interesting parable that Jesus tells, because as he tells the story, it's actually a parable about grace that ends with torture. Isn't that lovely? I love how Jesus tells stories. He's a great, great storyteller. Um, if we were to understand the debt, if we were to understand the debt that, that Jesus is talking about, uh, this, the translators of the New International Version, this is actually the new New International Version, the translation you have, it says that they had 10,000 bags of now, uh, the old state, the old reading was 10,000 talents. Uh, and then, uh, just to understand that, a day's wage would be a one denarii. So one denarii, or one denarius, whatever, one denarius, um, would be about a day's wage. And it would take about 6,000 denariuses, denarii, whatever. I should actually look that up. Um, how do which one gets pluralized there? It would take about 6,000 of them to make one talent, okay? So you're looking at 10,000 uh, 10, talents, 6,000 denarii, 6,000 days of work for one talent. And as Jesus tells his story, and everybody around him understands the, the money and the conversion system that's going on, he tells a story about a man who owes a king 10,000 talents. To put that into perspective, that is 60 million days of work. 60 million. It is, I looked it up, uh, 164,383 years of nonstop work. So, you know, it, it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. This is not a big debt versus a little debt. As Jesus is telling the story, he's actually talking about an impossible debt. There's an impossible debt. Uh, I think they, they figured that it would be roughly six billion today. As Jesus is telling the story, which is just chunk change, right? You know, you've all got it. I know. I know you're holding up. Um, it's not a big debt versus a little debt, but it's an impossible debt. An impossible debt. So I wanted to actually just kind of take, take you through this a little bit. See, there's this king. And he has a crown. Shiny gold crown. And this king, he has some books. And he is able to look through the books. And he's able to say, this person owes me this much. And so he has one of his servants who, who owes him some astronomical amount of money. And he calls him in. And he says to the servant, pay me back. It's time. You're due. And the servant gets down on his knees. And he begs the king. Have mercy on me. Show, show me pity. And the king looks at the servant and he has pity on him. He says, this is an impossible debt. You can't pay this back. And what happens? King takes his books and there's, there's a cost 
balance, there's your balance, and the king says, it's not going to work. Not going to work. And so the servant, freed and, and forgiven, he goes out and he sees another servant, one who owes him a hundred silver pieces, it says, but it's a hundred, right? And in a and hundred in our eyes, roughly three to four months of wages. So there's a debt there that it is possible to pay back. And he goes out, he sees this other servant, and he says to this other servant, pay me back. And the other servant says to him, please have mercy on me and I will pay you back everything that I owe you. First servant says, no. <laughs> And he has him hauled off to jail. Guards come and take him off. See you later. When the other servants see this, they go back and they tell the king. And the king comes and he looks. He looks at this servant of his. He says, do you not understand? Do you, do you not get it? Here's the debt, and I showed you mercy. Now, you want this? Go ahead and take it. And you can go for the next 164,353 or 83 or whatever it is years and pay me off. And he has his servant thrown in jail. This is a fascinating parable, as Jesus tells it about a king, who says, the system of keeping books, of keeping a ledger, doesn't work. Now, The king, up to this point, he had a system. And the system uh, was a system of good business. It's a it's good business. Anybody own a little business? Anybody ever? And there's accountants here. I know we have accountants. Um, it's, it's good business to, to actually keep track of what is owed. And so this king, he has a, a, a good system. He has a way of doing the business. It's a ledger. It's, you know, here's your pluses, here's your minuses. Here's the way it goes. And at some point, the king has to die to the bookkeeping system. It's done. In this forgiveness, something happens. The, the cost doesn't just disappear. If you have a bookkeeping system, it, 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 the debits don't just disappear. You need to have corresponding uh, pluses. Somebody has to absorb the cost. And so in this story, who's the one who absorbs the cost? It's the king. The king absorbs the cost and he dies to the bookkeeping system. Jesus is telling an absolutely brilliant story. The problem is, is that this first servant, this first servant, the king has, has gotten rid of his books, but the first servant wouldn't. The first servant still clings tightly to his books. King, as he decides not to live by the books, the king says that if you want to live in this way, be my guest. Be my guest. If you want to live clutching your books tightly, making sure all the, the debts are paid, be my guest. But it will be torture. It will be absolute torture. Hopefully you all got a sheet of paper. Yes? Anybody need a sheet of paper? Ushers, you got paper? Paper, paper, paper. Take your sheet of paper. Fold it in half like this. Got your sheet. Fold it in half. Fold it in half the other way. We're going to rip it down the middle. So it's good if you crease it a couple of times.
know you have, hopefully, after you've ripped it, if you've folded it down the middle, you've ripped it. Start to hear ribs still happening. Take it and fold it again in half so that you have your own book. You have one book here, you have one book here. You have two books. The instructions for this are actually written down in the uh, little handout for the day. If you're not going to follow along too well, perhaps, um, you can go back and refer to that. Inside of uh, each book, if you have a pen, take your pen, write down a little plus sign on the left hand side. On the right hand side, write down a minus sign. Each book, you have your pluses, you have your minuses. The left hand book, my left hand, your right hand. Left hand book, it's your book of your understanding of God, who God is, what He is. The right hand book is the book of our relationships with others. In the, in the first book, you can take, and on the plus side, the, the, the book of our understanding, our relationship with God, you can write down on the plus side all of the reasons that God loves you. All of the things that you have done to make God happy. All of the sins that you have not committed. All of the things that God looks upon you and smiles upon. It's like, anybody, we have this. We have things that, that God, we think, you know, God looks at me. I uh, comb my hair neatly. Something like that. Whatever it is. Plus the inside. On the minus side. Of course, you have the, the opposite problem. All of the things that you have done that God is severely dis displeased with. What you have committed, what you have done. You have a plus, you have a minus. This is how books work. This is how the ledger works. You have pluses, you have minuses. And so within this book, you can have all your pluses, all the things that you think God loves you for, and you can have your minuses, all the things that you think God is greatly displeased with. The other side, the other book, you fill it with the nice people who praise you, those who think you're wonderful, those who flatter you. And on the minus side, you fill it with those who have hurt you, those who have abused you, those who have misused you, those who have uh, given you the cold shoulder, those who have ignored you, those who stepped on your speaker. Go ahead, what if you pick one? You got it. I've got it. Verse 34, in his anger, or in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. In anger, he was handed over to be tortured. See, the thing of it is, as Jesus is telling the story, he knows there is a system for us as human beings that is rooted in bookkeeping. That is absolutely fundamentally uh, found in the way in which we keep our books. We, we grow very early into the system where people praise us for the good things we do. And people uh, ignore us. They're not interested or whatever they are. We grow very easily into the system as children uh, and into adulthood. Uh, with God. Thinking that there are, there are good things we can do for God. And there are things that God hates us. There are things that, that God is so angry at us that he would just love to smite us for. We grow very easily into the system of bookkeeping. And as we do, it shapes everything that we do. We keep track. We keep sport. It looks like good business. But it's really complete. 
completely torture. That's what Jesus is saying. Now take your books, take them home with you. Um, this week, spend some time with them, you fill them out. Um, if somebody does something, you say, oh yeah, you're going in the mind side. <laughs> totally in the mind, you're right, totally in the mind side. Oh, yeah. Somebody does something, like, oh yeah, that's a total plus. Wow. And just spend time sitting there saying, wow, how much do I actually do this? <laughs> How much do I actually say, uh, I'm going to put you into a plus or minus relationship with me, with God? It's because Jesus is asking this question in this parable. It's a good question. It's a, it's a question of forgiveness. Jesus asks, do you really want to live in an account ledger relationship with God? Do you really want to sit there and live in a plus and minus relationship with God? Do you really want to do this with each other? Forgiveness Forgiveness is dying to the bookkeeping system. Forgiveness is dying to the bookkeeping system. The man, the, the servant, he sits there and he has his books clutched tightly. Wherever I my book, apparently he took it away. Oh, here. He has his books clutched tightly. The king has thrown him away. And he invites his people to do that with him. Look at your life. Look at your forgiveness. Look at how, how easy it is to keep track, to keep score. You did this to me. You did this to, to this person. Are you willing? To, to begin the forgiveness process truly and die to the books. Amen. Mighty God, we ask uh, and we look at ourselves. Uh, we look at forgiveness. We look at how um, we've often kept sport. We've often kept track of uh, what people have done. Uh, what we've done, how, how great we've been. Uh, Lord, we ask you to, to help us die to the human system um, so that we who have been forgiven an impossible death uh, would be people who forgive small death. We ask this, Jesus.